Today, I want to bring an understanding as to the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Godhead. Not God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. It is God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Some have said the Holy Spirit is just a power. Where there is too many references to the Holy Spirit being the third person of the triune God for him to be only a power. We know that uh, Peter, uh, later in the book of Acts, says to Ananias and Sapphira, you have not lied to man, but you have lied to God. And in that same passage, he says, you have lied to the Holy Spirit. I mean, you can't lie to a power. Can you? you can't lie to a laser beam or anything like that. I mean, definitely the Holy Spirit. We know that the Holy Spirit was involved in the creation of this world. Jesus gave reference to the Holy Spirit. And we see this in John chapter 14, uh, verse 25. He says, these things I have said to you while being present with you, but the helper. It's interesting. Uh, that the Holy Spirit is symbolized in many different ways. One of them is as a dove. The other here is as a helper. We see he is uh, uh, symbolized in peace. Jesus later on says to his disciples, receive peace, receive the Holy Spirit. Have a look at this with me. But the help of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Immediately, he then says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Can you imagine being with Jesus for three years, going through, well, at this juncture, he hasn't died on the cross as yet. He hasn't been resurrected as yet. He is preparing the disciples for what is to come. Later on, of course, he is crucified. He is resurrected. And now they know when he's warned them, he's going to leave. We see this in um, John chapter, where are we here? John chapter 20. And uh, he is talking to the disciples. He says, peace be with you. In verse 21, he says, so Jesus said to them again, peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. Well, of course, now he has died. He has been resurrected. And he then says, receive the Holy Spirit. This is the moment by which the Holy Spirit no longer came just upon people, but they would receive him. They would be born again. We know in John 3, 3, it says, unless a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. We read in uh, the book of Acts, in uh, chapter 1, Jesus says, you have heard from me. Uh, for John truly baptized you with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Now, they're already born again. This was going to be a separate experience. They were already born again. They'd received the Holy Spirit. The blood of Christ redeemed them from all their sin. So here they are now, uh, saved. They're born again. They're Christians, not called Christians at this stage. However, that's what they were. Now, of course, as we read on, we see, he says, uh, uh, and he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. The very purpose of this coming upon, now they'd already received him, but the purpose of him coming upon them, the Holy Spirit, would be in power. This word power literally means is, is dynamite, is dunamos, dynamite power.
power. Why? To be his witnesses, that they would have the authority, the power, the supernatural power that comes from God to do that, which in their own strength they could not do. Now, later on here, we see then Peter, who once had denied Christ three times, now stands up and gives this extraordinary sermon. The Holy Spirit does come upon them in Acts chapter 2. We see tongues of fire. We see them speaking in other tongues. We see later on in Corinthians, Paul gives teaching as to this baptism and the Holy Spirit and the various gifts of the Holy Spirit associated with this experience. Now, we need to understand who the Holy Spirit is and to walk with him. I remember uh, Paul Yongi Cho spoke uh, and grew the largest church in the world at that time, I think over a million people. He said his partner in life was the Holy Spirit. Christian, the reason we have the Holy Spirit with us is that he would teach us about Christ. Why? Is it because Jesus is more important than the Holy Spirit? No. No, not at all. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. They each have their work with us, toward us, their own uh, work toward us individually. The Father the Son, Jesus died for us. His blood is what uh, cleanses us. He is our advocate with the Father. He is the propitiation for our sins. And it is the Holy Spirit's work to direct us toward Christ. In fact, it's the Holy Spirit that reveals Jesus to people in order for them to be saved. When we receive Christ, we really are receiving the Holy Spirit. As Christ breathed on them, so he breathes upon a brand new believer. Then, of course, there is this experience of being baptized in the Holy Spirit. Why? To be his witnesses. That's the primary reason. To be the witness for Jesus Christ. That the Holy Spirit would teach you what to say. He says in his word, do not fear what you should say when they drag you to give a defense for what you believe. For in that hour, the Holy Spirit will teach you. It is the Holy Spirit that walks with us and talks with us. It's the Holy Spirit that reveals this word. Jesus said, you read the scriptures and in them you think you have life, but these scriptures speak of me. And it's the Holy Spirit that breathes upon the word of God and brings that alive. To us. Oh, friend, I want to bring some more teaching, particularly in relation to the baptism and the Holy Spirit, uh, so that we might have understanding. The baptism and the Holy Spirit is not salvation, it is a separate experience in God. When you are born again, you receive the Holy Spirit, you are saved. You have your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. If you have confessed Jesus publicly, then he has confessed you to his Father in heaven. Hallelujah. Praise God. However, there is a walk of salvation, a walk of obedience. I love the church. I love the church. The church itself is not salvation. I often say to our church, the church is not a palace. <laughs> the church is a hospital. <laughs> The church is a hospital. <laughs> you, go, all, all you, you, you come just as you are. But within the church, there are teachers, there are apostles, there are prophets, there are evangelists. And the, oh my goodness, there, there is a place for you in the family of God. Jesus started the church. The disciples in Acts, we see this extraordinary intake of people that came to Christ. We love the Lord. We love the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God. Expressed, in fact, I heard Oral Roberts, it was many years ago, said Jesus is God's personal expression of himself to mankind. And the Holy Spirit is he who reveals Jesus that we might be saved. Now, God bless you. Have a look at some of those scriptures. I'm going to bring some more teaching on this. This is a subject that I grew up with, and uh, but I see that uh, is uh, in some parts, some parts anyway, is lacking on teaching in this area. So 
If you'd like to message me privately or email me, feel free to do that. God bless you. And I pray that the Holy Spirit might witness to your heart and reveal Jesus, that he might not only be uh, God, the Son, but that he might be your friend, your father, and that the Holy Spirit might reveal him even more.